In this video, we're going to be taking a look at two vertical motion problems, an object being swung in a vertical circle, and then secondly, an object or a ball being swung in a horizontal circle. So for our first problem, we're going to solve for the force of tension at two different locations, at the very top and also at the bottom as well. The most important part is to look at the forces acting on the object at the top of the loop and at the bottom of the loop. Now they both have the same forces, which are the force of gravity, pulling it down, and then also the force of tension, pulling it inward towards the center of the circle. And then at the bottom position, we still have the force of gravity, pulling it downwards. And then we have the force of tension, tugging it towards the center of the circle. Now there is a big difference in setting up each of those formulas to find the correct FT. So let's go ahead and set up our formula for the force of tension, the force of gravity at the top of the circle and at the bottom. Okay, so the big difference is fairly subtle, but is gonna change your answer significantly. So let's take a look at the top of the circle. At the top of the circle, we have both of the forces pointing downward. Now remember when you're working with a circular motion problem, you wanna make sure that anything that is centripetal pointing towards the center of the circle is considered positive, and then anything pointing away from the center of the circle is considered negative. So at your top position, both of those are pointing inwards towards the center of the circle, so they're both considered positive. Now for the bottom of the circle, we have our FT pulling it towards the center of the circle, but our FG is directly outwards away from the center of the circle. So it's going to be FT minus FG. So it's considering FG is negative. Now, although that is a subtle difference in the look of the formula, which is basically just the sign here, that is going to change our answer significantly. So if we're looking for our FT, we have that as our final unknown. And then for the FG, we're going to do um, mass times 9.8, mass is 2 kilograms times 9.8, and that equals the mass times the centripetal acceleration. The centripetal acceleration is always shown by V squared over R. So we have a mass of 2 kilograms. And it does not look like we have a velocity, but we can go ahead and use a second formula and do a little substitution. Our um, velocity is two pi r over t, two pi times the radius is the circumference of the circle. So it's basically a distance around the circle. And then capital T is the period of the amount of time it takes to complete that circle. So for our velocity, we're gonna do that substitution and we're gonna go two pi times r, which is just one meter exactly, over t, our t, our period is two seconds, divided by two, and then that entire thing is squared because it's v squared in our original formula. Now let's go back and finish off the rest of it. And so we got the m at the v squared and then divided by the r, the r comes out to just 1.0. So if we take, um, our velocity, which is basically these two's canceling out. So just a pi left over times one is just pi. So pi squared times two divided by one. And then we're gonna get 19.74 Newtons. Okay, so all we have to do is we have to do one simple step of algebra, which is subtracting 19.6 from both sides. And then we have our final force of tension value, 
which is just 0 0.14 newtons. Okay, you, know, you might be asking yourself, why is that value so small? Now, if something is going around in a circle like this, it has some inertia, and then it has that force of gravity holding it down, and which is part of its centripetal force. And because it has plenty of centripetal force from the FG, um, the FT doesn't have to pull it that hard towards the center of the circle. But then once it starts getting pulled downwards and then FT has to overcome the force of gravity and have that net force to make it go around in a circle, the FT should be a lot larger for our second calculation. So this is our FT at the top. Now, if we want to do our FT for the bottom, it's just going to be a slight change. Um, we don't have to do very much work because we know most of our values. Um, we just know that it's going to be FT again. So FT minus FG. We already know FG is 2 times 9.8. So that's going to be 19.6 equals and then MV squared over R. We already did the work ahead of time for the MV squared over R, and we know that is 19.74 newtons. So for this one, all we got to do is add our 19.6 to both sides, and then we are done. And then our FT comes out to a significantly larger number of 39.34 newtons. Okay, so once again, um, your setup in setting up these black formulas over here and over here are gonna be the most significant in your setup. And this little minor change in sign from a plus to a minus is gonna change our answer a bunch from 0 0.14 newtons to 39.34 newtons. Now, when you're working out a horizontal circle question, uh, I'm not gonna work that out in its entirety, but um, FG, in this case, isn't pointing towards the center of your circle or away from the center of your circle. So you don't need to include it with setting up your formula. So if you were to set up a problem like this, basically all you would do is say that FT equals MV squared over R. And that's considering that this is an ideal situation because if there's an FG pulling it down, it would sag the rope a little bit. And that would be a completely different, more complicated problem that is called a tetherball question in a lot of cases. So if you want to see the video for that, go ahead and click on this link above. But if you're working out an ideal situation where something is swooping around in a horizontal circle, your FT is basically equal to your MV squared over R. And then obviously, depending on what you're solving for, you would do similar type steps and ideas as we did previously with our vertical circle. Um, so I hope that was helpful in helping you solve a vertical and horizontal circle problem. Thank you for watching and listening.